I am here Saturday morning filming this. Yes, I have a leopard print. Um, I would call it a blanket, but it's actually a snuggie uh, that I'm wearing incorrectly because I'm a little chilly. So you get to see. It's actually my grandma's. She very kindly lent it to me. Um, if you didn't know I was Eastern European before, I think the ownership of a leopard print snuggie really drives that point home. Today, we're going to be doing a March of the Mammoths, but more realistically, a big book TBR uh, with some of my bigger books. Now, from what I gathered from watching other videos, a Mammoth is a book that is 800 pages or over. I have a few that fall into this category. Um, most, uh, ooh, I don't know what I want to say there, but most of them I think are over 800, but there's two that are um, under 800 without notes and then with notes they're over 800. All right, so without further ado, let's get into it. Um, and we're starting off on a just wonderful note, I, I would say. It's a terrible note. It's Stalin by Stephen Kotkin. Um, I don't... Kotkin? Kotkin? Kot? I don't know. Uh, and this is Volume 1, a Paradoxes of Power. And this is 1878 to 1928. Uh, and this book is 739 pages without notes and with notes it's 862 pages. I'm always curious with um with nonfiction. Like with fiction it makes sense to me, right? Because there's the original text and then there's the context you would like to provide. With nonfiction I'm like, why couldn't you just include that in the thing? I don't know, I guess footnotes do get kind of annoying and it can like bring you out of the thing, but you know what else brings me out of the thing? Reading and then having to flip back you know, 600 pages to then flip. Like that's also very, um, very annoying. I tend to just like read the chapter and then go back, but whatever. So the reason um, I bought this book many, many, many years ago when I was on this kick of like, I'm gonna read nonfiction and subsequently didn't really read a lot of nonfiction, but I bought nonfiction. Uh, and this is a book that I purchased. The reason why I picked it up and now have renewed interest in it is because I'm listening to The Future is History by Marsha Gilson, where she references Stephen Kotkin as being this like, um, kind of like Harvard professor, you know, expert on Russia. So that is why this is on this list. And next up, another nonfiction. Uh, this is Under the Loving Care of the Fatherly Leader, North Korea and the Kim Dynasty by Bradley K. Martin. So I have actually started reading this, and this is the one that I'm most far into. But honestly, at some point, I think I would start this book again because it's really, it has been like years of little bits of reading this. This book is. 712 pages without notes and with notes it is 853 pages um, I really enjoy this I really I think this is a very good piece of a piece of information piece of literature piece of nonfiction uh, if you're interested in North Korea uh, the one thing is that um, Martin is a journalist and that means that a lot of this is written I think almost like um, articles that were taken and turned into a chapter which means it's very hard to sit down and read through. He has that like journalist snippet or like kind of small article way of writing and yeah it's it's hard to get through. I haven't picked this up in, in quite a long time but I have kind of returned to this book multiple times and I do really like it. I do think it is information fill and I think it gives a lot of the like realities on the ground of like what the policies were but also a lot of that like background drama which I think we often forget how how involved that drama is in actual politics if that makes sense and actually that's funny I did end up doing it the first two were my non-fictions and these are my fictions so first on the fiction list which not first on my TBR list, but first on the fiction list, is um, uh, The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas. 
this is 1,462 pages and um, as a child up until maybe a few years ago I always got the Count of Monte Cristo and uh, the Devil of uh, Dante's Inferno confused always like those two things were just to me um, I know very little about this book even though it is so famous and I really like it that way I want to keep it that way I want to come into this surprised I know I think there's is there a Beatrice in here I am not sure uh, but I know that this is like a very exciting intriguing book and yeah I'm, I'm, I'm excited I do wish the cover wasn't like just like Duma look at Duma here he is but what you gonna do Next up is another book I've already started. I'm 200 pages in, which is, looks so piddly in this giant book. Like, 200 pages looks like nothing. Um, but this is War and Peace by uh, Leo Tolstoy, and this is translated by the, you know, the giants of Russian literature translation, Richard Pivar and Larisa Valachonsky. Uh, and yes, this is about, like, the Napoleonic war into russia in 1812 um i love tolstoy's ability to even though these are like characters and experiences you will never be in like the way he describes them i can see that i'm like oh my god that's how i would have acted or that's how like i can he, he describes the the behaviors these like minute little um like movements of people so well that you feel like you're in that room even though you'll never be in a room like this one in your life uh this book is 1215 pages without notes and with notes it's 173 pages again here it makes sense to me there's a lot of really specific information that if you are not an expert you would not know that fact um like I'm reading Dead Souls and in Dead Souls there's a reference to a play that was very popular at the time and so obviously they can't say that like in the text it's not in the text that the the readers at that time didn't need that information but I as a modern reader do this is probably the book that I would want to get through first and it is Musashi by Eiji Yoshikawa and this is about a guy who becomes a very amazing swordsman who has mastered a two swords style of fighting. Um, yes, it's very like samurai novel-esque, but it was written in the last century, as in it was written in like the 1900s. I think like 1936 or something or 1920s, I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, and this is 970 pages long. So yeah, this is probably like more first on my list but now that i'm thinking about it i might go back to war and peace first but now that i'm really thinking about it i also have um, books that i'm currently reading so I, I should focus on those as opposed to you know every other book i own and last one i did buy this yesterday and it is the books of jacob by olga Takarzuk. i think i don't know how to pronounce polish names i need to look it up uh, and i know that this is like Nobel Prize winning book because it says so on the front cover very helpfully uh, but I do not know anything about this book like there's the back of the book I don't even really want to read the back of the book I just know that this is like a I saw her other book and I kind of want to read that one not I'm like I think I'm more maybe drawn to that book but something was like don't read that one first read this one first and so I picked it up. Like I went searching for it. I was like, I know there's a, uh, another book and I went searching for that book, which is this book. And then I found it and I was like, hmm, that is a lot bigger than I expected it to be. <laughs> I'd forgotten how big it was, but still that's fine. She will be right. Okay, so I was trying to figure out which page number to tell you for this book because I remember looking at something yesterday and it being like, like a super high page number. I was like, oh, of course, this, this definitely fits into the number of pages. Also, like, look at this. Of course, it's more than 800 pages long. So I go to look and I'm like, wait a minute, why does that say 50 in the back of the book? And I was like, oh my God, it's books of Jacob. It probably is like all the page numbers are dispersed into these little books, but no, it's not even that. The book is numbered, page numbered backwards. It's Benjamin buttoning me, guys. What? Yeah, so fully, the books of Jacob starts on the prologue, starts on page 965, 
and ends. Ugh. Well, I guess according to this, it ends on page five. But there's acknowledgments and all that. That is so cool. That is so fun. I. I don't know, I think that's like a, an exciting thing to sort of discover about a book before you're even really reading it. I'm really happy. I really, really want to read this now and I don't know anything about it. Um, I picked up two other books yesterday. Uh, I made a short about them, so you can check this out if you, check that out if you'd like. But yeah, these are my big books on my TBR. And yeah, let me know if any of these books are things you've read um, or any books that are like mammoths that you want to pick up maybe this month maybe this year whichever uh yeah and i will talk to you in another video soon